Hey guys, welcome to Chef Grace's Place. So I've been making a series of videos on how to just make a basic uh, cake. So we've baked the cake, we've made the icing, we've made the filling. So now it's time to learn how to put it all together. So before we get started, there are gonna be some tools that you're gonna need. First tool I really recommend is a turntable if you're gonna make a lot of cakes. Uh, it's going to be hard if you don't have something to spin it on. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, this one was 60 bucks. This is pretty much the one that most professionals use. If you're really going to get into cake decorating, I would definitely recommend it. If you're not, <laughs> I would just get yourself like a plate that's as flat as possible. Or even maybe like the bottom of a sheet pan and put that on top of something that can you can move around easily, okay? Because when we're icing, you're gonna have to turn. Another thing you're gonna need is a spatula. You can use an offset or you can use a straight one like this. Another good thing to have is a bench scraper. A pastry brush is important. You're gonna need to uh, wipe away crumbs and the longest serrated knife that you can find. If you really want a serrated knife, that's gonna be a little bit longer than your cake, if you can find it. And that's gonna help um, make sure your layers are nice and even when you cut. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unwrap our cake. I made this yesterday um, because I wanted to make sure it cooled all the way. Just opening it, it's just like chocolate, it's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about the structure of the cake, right? So when I baked it, this was the bottom, right? And this is the top. But when we build it, this is gonna be the top because this is super flat and that's what we want. A nice flat cake. I'm gonna put it on my stand. I'm actually gonna put this cake board on the bottom. If you don't have a cake board, um, don't worry about it, but you're probably going to want to ice your cake on whatever plate you're going to serve it on because you're going to have a hard time moving it around once it's full, okay? So this is to support the cake when you're moving it around. I'm going to do three layers in this cake, which is why it's important I have a, a nice long knife, but I'm not going to use the top layer because it's not flat. And also I like to have it as a snack, to be honest with you. Uh, you could put the, make this a middle layer of your cake. It's not gonna be super even, um, but if you wanna add height to it, that's a good way to do it. I always like to have the cake top to snack on and also having a piece of the cake um, allows me to taste it with the filling and the icing so I can make sure my flavor profiles are working well in case I need to tweak something. I'm gonna cut off the top layer first. I'm gonna make sure my cake is in the center here and I want to make sure my knife is level. So by keeping my knife level I'm gonna have a straight layer. If it's not straight I'm gonna get like this spiral effect and it's gonna waste a lot of cake. This is another reason why we're gonna move the cake and not the knife. If I just saw through the cake there's a lot of room for error, a lot of room for me to move my knife and not keep it level. So that's where the turntable comes in. So I'm going to put my hand on top and I'm looking for like the edge of where it becomes straight. So I'm going to get the knife in there a little bit and then I'm going to start turning the cake and keep my knife nice and level. Now you're going to feel it when it falls off and by doing that I know this is the top part is uneven, but my cut should be pretty even. There we go. And the straighter you can cut it, the uh, less crumbs you're gonna get to, right? And that's why we have our pastry brush. We're gonna just wipe away our crumbs. Another tool I forgot, you know that kitchen towel that you really liked and then 
you got it stained with like tomato sauce or chocolate or something and you wash it but it still looks dirty because it's stained now's the time to use that towel so you want to take that towel and you want to wet it with water and we're going to wring it out so it's still wet but it's not dripping everywhere this is going to be used to wipe the icing off your spatula and just keep your area clean we want to keep as clean of a workspace as possible because when we do go to ice our cake, we don't want to get any crumbs in the icing. You're also going to want to plate your cake board for your other layers, just so you can move them around easy. Um, the thinner you make your layers, the more you're going to want to support them as you move them because they're going to be more fragile. Okay, so since we're trying to keep it basic, we're only going to do three layers. Okay, so you got to think, how am I going to make this into thirds? So obviously, if we cut here, that's going to be half. We don't want that. We want two layers of filling. So I'm going to have one layer with the Nutella, and then I'm going to have another layer with buttercream and fresh cut bananas. Now, when we're thinking about flavor profiles and textures for a cake, we also want to think about time. Flying driving me nuts. Anyway, so what do, what do I mean by time? Bananas have a lot of moisture in them, and that could break my buttercream. So I don't want to build this cake and serve it two days later. I want to serve it a couple hours later. But I love Nutella and bananas, so <laughs> I really want to put that in there. And I really hate fake banana flavoring. So another thing to think about is stability. So I want to put the bananas in here, but I'm not going to make that the bottom layer because it's, you know, it's kind of slimy. So I don't want all the weight to be on something that isn't completely stable. The Nutella I made is very dense and um, I kind of made it that way on purpose because I want it to be a nice bottom layer on my uh, cake. After thinking about all of this, that's when you want to cut your cake. So I know I'm going to have one layer, one filling layer with Nutella and one with the bananas. This looks like about a third and I'm going to do the same thing I did with my top. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to keep turning, all right? So once you have your knife in, you really just want to turn the cake into the knife and not the... Uh, you don't want to move the knife that much because we got to keep it level as level as possible. And usually, the faster you go, the easier it is. I can already tell. I was talking on too much. It's not as straight as I would like. But the good thing about cake decorating is you're really good at covering up your mistakes. Actually, that's not that bad. It's a little high over here. I don't know if you can see that. But overall, not that bad. Okay. One more layer right here. I'm gonna shut up now so I stop messing up. There you go. Okay, so this lovely layer is gonna be my top, but I gotta clean up my crumbs first. So how do you decide which layers go on the bottom and the top? What I like to do is I pick the second best layer, meaning like the most stable and straight layer, I want to make that my bottom layer, right? Because the best layer is obviously that bottom layer that's super flat, so we're saving that for the top. Both my layers look pretty good, so I'm not that worried. So I'm going to take my cake board, and if you don't have a cake board, use your super flat plate. Alright, this is my good top layer. So I need to get that off the cake board. So I'm going to take this layer really gently, don't break your cake, and put it here. Now another reason I chose chocolate cake was because this cake has sour cream and oil in it and it's super moist. If I was going to make something like a sponge cake, at this point I would have a simple syrup which is equal parts sugar and water and dissolved. And then I would flavor that. Um, usually with chocolate cake, you would put a little bit of rum in it, maybe some vanilla. 
and I would soak the cake in that to keep it moist. You know, today we don't have to do that. But that's uh, one of those secret things that <laughs> I feel like most pastry chefs don't talk about. If I was going to use a simple syrup, I would use my pastry brush and I would dab it. I would get the syrup and then I would dab it like this to absorb. I wouldn't brush because if I brush, I'm going to stir up all the crumbs. Okay, so once you have your layers cut, we're going to start filling and building our cake. So my bottom layer is going to be Nutella, but I do not want that dark chocolate color, Nutella, to come outside of the cake. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a border with my coffee buttercream, which is going to be my outside flavor. We got to talk about tools again. So this is a reusable pastry bag. It's better for the environment than having a bunch of plastic uh, pastry bags, but you do, you know, you gotta clean it. You could use a disposable pastry bag, but because I'm using the same flavor on the entire cake when it comes to the buttercream, I'd rather just use a reusable one that I can wash. Uh, this is also gonna save you money on pastry bags. If you're just getting started with uh, cake decorating, you really only need like two tips. You need a straight tip and you need a star tip. So that's a star tip. It's the one with the pointy edges. They usually come in the set, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And then this is a straight tip. This is, you know, it's just flat uh, circle. And because I'm using the same flavor, I'm going to add a coupler to my bag. A coupler allows you to change the tip on a pastry bag. So it's two parts. You have the ring and the coupler part. I don't know what you call that. So I'm going to put this big part inside the bag, which you should just see poking out. If it's too big of a hole, the tips will fall out. If it's too small, you're going to have trouble securing the coupler. Then you're going to pick what tip you want. I'm just going to put this straight tip on. And then I'm going to secure it with the ring. All right, so I got my coupler and my ring. And my straight tip on there. You could do this with the star tip too. There, I, you know, it's just easier to make sure there's no gaps with the straight tip. So now I'm going to fill up my bag with buttercream. I'm going to twist the bag and push it inside there, inside the coupler. And that's just going to prevent any buttercream from falling out. Now if you feel like you can't hold the bag and the, the buttercream at once, you can put it in a cup or a quart container to hold it. Don't fill up your bag too much because then it's just going to come out the end. We don't want to go more than like halfway. And then we're going to push it down. Get that out of the way. And once we push it down and you start seeing buttercream come out. You want to twist the bag. See how I'm holding the bag between my thumb and my pointer finger? Right? I'm keeping that pressure on the bag and I'm going to squeeze from the end. Right? We don't want to squeeze with our guide hand. I'm just going to create a border by squeezing and you can see that the table is helping me out by turning, and if you don't have a turntable, just go around the edge. All right. Now, as long as you don't have any gaps, you should be fine. This isn't gonna be as crazy with um, the Nutella because it's so thick 
but if you're doing maybe a strawberry jam or something you might even want to do a second uh, layer like this just to make sure it doesn't run out right you're building a dam basically so Nutella is a janduya and this is thicker than prepackaged Nutella so I'm actually gonna microwave this a little just to make it more spreadable whenever you microwave chocolate you want to do it in 10 second increments. Chocolate burns really easily and you got to be very, very careful when you microwave anything regarding chocolate. Us that's why usually you melt it on a double boiler. It's so much safer than doing it in the microwave. But I mean, I don't have time to do that and I'm not trying to melt it, melt it. I just want to get it where I can spread it onto the cake. All right, so that actually looks beautiful. Ooh so I'm just gonna load that in there. That looks amazing, oh my God. <laughs> and I don't wanna go above the dam. Which it might break. I might've just added too much, I'm not gonna lie. All right. So next, I'm going to add my next layer. My dam might break, but that's okay. We can fix it. Always remember that. You can always fix it. All right. So I'm just going to push down a little bit to make it set. And when I put my other cake layer on, you want to make sure it's even before you push down. Otherwise, you're going to have the le Leaning Tower of Pizza Cake, right? Nobody wants that. So this layer is gonna be a layer of buttercream and then my banana slices. So you can use a piping bag for this or you could just use your spatula. Whoop. It's called burping the bag. <laughs> my air bubble gets stuck in there. So I'm just using my bag because um, it was there, right? It does help you get an even layer of buttercream, but you can use a spatula too. I don't think I have enough in here. Don't worry about the edges because it's all going to be caught with buttercream. Now for my banana. I gotta remember bananas oxidize, so we want to get this put together as quick as possible. That's another reason why you want to serve this the same day. But I just think it adds such a good texture and flavor to the cake. So I'm going to just put a little bit of buttercream on top so the cake can stick to it and it'll be a little more even. But I don't have a lot of buttercream left and I want to make sure I coat the outside of the cake. All right? So just a little bit just to get it sticking to the, the top layer. Okay. Put my top layer on and I'm going to squish it down. Now, this is a home style cake. So what I mean by that is ne the next step is usually the crumb coat. I don't have enough buttercream to do two coats and uh, it's the same technique. So if you want to do a crumb coat, you're just going to do this, but thinner, put it in the refrigerator. I don't have space in my refrigerator. So, or you could put it in your freezer, but you just want to wait until the buttercream is hard. And that's like your primer, like a prime coat. If you're painting a wall, you know, you got to paint it white and then put the color on. So this is the same thing. So the crumb coat would trap all the crumbs and then you put the final coat on, which is another reason why you want to keep your area as clean as possible because if you go to do the final coat, you got crumbs all over your table, you're probably gonna get crumbs in your final coat. I'm just gonna do the one coat though, and it's gonna taste amazing and it's gonna look good too. <laughs> Might be a couple crumbs in there, but I'm not that concerned. Another reason why if you are only gonna do one coat, pick a color that's similar to the cake because then you're not gonna see the crumbs <laughs> as much. It's pretty good thinking, right? <laughs> so, 
I'm gonna start icing the cake and just remember if you're gonna do a crumb coat while that cakes in the refrigerator hardening up make sure you clean your area and get rid of any crumb that might uh, find its way into your final coat so I'm gonna take my buttercream and put it on there I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm gonna start working the buttercream to the edges and I might need more you can always take take it off so it's always better to put more on now this is pretty much all my buttercream which is why we're doing one coat um, this is the coffee flavored Swiss buttercream from the other video so I encourage you guys to watch that um, if this is the first video you're seeing so right now I'm just worried about getting a flat even layer on my the top of my cake right which it should be easy if your cake is already flat on top right but if not what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our spatula we're gonna kind of put it on a little bit of an angle it's about like a 10 degree angle I'm gonna make sure my the tip of my spatula is in the middle and then I'm just gonna turn my cake and we want to make sure that you're holding the spatula level if I'm holding it like this I'm gonna have a peak at the top if I'm holding it like that I'm gonna have a in a, crev, a crater basically <laughs> in the top of my cake so the flatter you hold this the more level the top of your cake is gonna be and it's not gonna matter too much if it was uneven or not before that. So once you've leveled off your cake, you're going to take your spatula and you see this icing hanging over. We're just going to start bringing that down the sides and adding more icing on the sides if it needs it. You really want to make sure that icing is getting into the crevices on the side. Oh, you can see my dam broke and that's okay. That's why you'd want a crumb coat too, because then we're not gonna have a Nutella swirl on the outside. But uh, I'm actually all right with a Nutella swirl on the outside. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> I just probably wanna bring it all the way around, you know? Make it look like I did that on purpose. That's the trick with good cake decorating <laughs> is when you make a mistake, try to make it look like you did it on purpose. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep adding icing to my the sides of my cake until I've covered um, all the spots where I can like see the cake. Right. This is also where a crumb coat comes in handy because you can kind of create a super straight foundation, and then you don't have to worry about the cake showing through. So once I have everything covered up pretty well. That's when I'm gonna take my bench knife and uh, clean up my excess. Put the bench knife and hold it steady. And then you're just gonna spin the cake. So you can see I do have some spots like that we can fill them over you might have to come you might have to do this a few times if you were just doing a crumb coat like that really wouldn't matter that much so you can just patch it I'm also not too worried about the bottom parts because I'm gonna put a border there so you shouldn't be able to see it anyway. So one thing I do worry about is I really want there to be a lip here, like there is here, so I can get some nice straight edges. So I'm just gonna add on more icing. I'm gonna go around one more time with my bench knife. Make sure you take that towel and you wipe off your bench knife before you do it. And I'm not gonna go as far in this time because I don't want to expose any of the chocolate cake. Now 
know, you could go around and be a perfectionist, or you could go make more buttercream. <laughs> uh, or you could just quit while you're ahead, right? So, to me, that's pretty good. I do have some cake showing, but we'll use some decorating techniques to kind of hide that a little bit. This is the most important part. Every time you use this to pull in the edges, you're going to have to wipe it off in between, okay? So you wipe it off, you put the excess icing on your bowl, and then anything else you wipe off with the towel. This is because anything left over when you go and do your next swipe, it's going to um, leave a little mark. So I'm gonna, what I mean by pulling in the edges is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pull it in. You wanna make sure you pull it in starting away from the cake. You don't wanna start here. You wanna start from behind the cake. And then wipe. So you're gonna get a good clean edge when you pull in. See, I didn't even I didn't come close enough on that. And this is something you might become a perfectionist about too, but uh, that's okay. And this is also another reason why, you know, if it's bothering you that much, you do a, coat, a crumb coat like this, and then you would do your final coat. And this looks great for a crumb coat. Doesn't look great for a final coat, but you know, we gotta do what we got. It's gonna taste delicious. And this way I'll be able to show you how to cover up some defects, right? So we're gonna look here, right? We're gonna put a border on the top. We're gonna put a border on the bottom. We're gonna say, I can see here, or maybe I can see through here. So that's gonna be the back of the cake, right? These are all things you wanna think about. Or maybe I don't like my sides at all. Now I'll just cover those up with sprinkles. I could do that too. Um, so there's all different ways to make your cake look better um, than white wherever your icing